By the end of this video, you would have built a billion dollar software and get acquired by Google so you can spend the rest of your life testing out every new trendy tech stacks. All right, I'm not so sure about all that, but my promise is this. At the end of this video, you'll know exactly how to use the platform Product Hunt in order to drive traffic to your website and grow your startups. And you'll see that it doesn't require any prior experience or doesn't cost any money. But why should you trust me? Well, I got the Maker of the Year award in 2023. I launched 21 products on Product Hunt in the last two to three years, and I got 13 awards and you'll see that at the beginning I didn't get anything and then it got easier and easier. So there is some knowledge that you can reuse to replicate the same. Let's go. All right, first Product Hunt 101 and is it worth launching your startup there? There's about 4 million visitors on the site every month and it's high quality traffic. There are a bunch of designers, programmers, agency, solopreneurs. So uh, the eyeballs you're getting there are very good. If you end up in the top product of the day, you can expect two to 3,000 visitors just from the platform. But it's not it. They also have one of the biggest tech news editor out there. So if you end up in the top five to 10 product of the day, you will also get shared somewhere there and you will add another extra thousand or 2000 visitors to your site. And finally, there are a bunch of media that feed off product hunt because this is where the new trendy tech happens. So after the launch, when the traffic goes down, you will see some spikes coming from other platforms. And product hunt is very famous. So overall, it's a very good investment for your startup. All right, if you haven't launched on product hunt, here is roughly how it works. Every 24 hours, there is a new bunch of product that are displayed on the homepage of the platform and they are competing to get the most upvotes. The timer resets at midnight PST and for the first four hours, there is no ranking based on upvotes, it's just purely random to avoid the winner takes all. After the fifth hour, the products start to rank based on their number of upvotes and so it's a winner takes all game and if you are at the top, you're almost guaranteed to stay around the top and if you're at the bottom, it's very hard to climb up. That's why the first four hours are the most important and in this video, we're gonna cover how to get the most upvotes during this time. There are two ways to get upvotes on product hunt. And first is called the inbound upvotes, the upvotes that are coming from users who are actually browsing the platform and they find your listing and they decide to upvote it. On the Product Hunt home feed, there are tons of other products competing against yours for attention. And the way you win is by nailing three things, your name, your tagline, and your logo. The name of your startup should be short, simple, and very easy to read. And you would rather ditch uh, like VC style names like Stripe or Tesla and go for something very logical like Shipfast a tool to ship fast. If you want a tutorial to make names for uh, products, I wrote a short article about finding good names for startups as a solopreneur in the blog in the description below. Next is your tagline and it's the most important part of the, your listing. It should be very short, like 60 to 70 characters maximum. It should be one sentence and it should tell exactly why would a random stranger on the internet invest its precious time for your product. It shouldn't be about your product, but it should be about what it's doing for your customers. Uh, what pain is it relieving? How they are life would be after they try your product, why is it worth their time? And finally, your logo, this is more the creative part that is up to you, but uh, if you see that there are many logos that are uh, blue colors, maybe go for a green that contrasts well. You want to stand out and be remarkable. Now, if users decided to click on your listing, there's two more important parts. The first one is your carousel of photos. You can put, I think, up to seven, eight, maybe even 10, but the first three matters. And what matters too is that you keep those images super simple. One image should be about one feature. And if you want to add a a screenshot of your product, this is a very good thing, but do not add the entire dashboard of your users, for instance. Make sure that you zoom on those photos and you show only a very tiny part of your software, as if the user was actually looking at uh, your software very, very close because nobody will read the text that's inside unless it's a big headline. And the last important part of this puzzle is the first comment. You, the founder, are going to write your little story, how you ended up with this product ID as the first comment on your listing. This is very important because people relate with people and stories. You are not a VC back company with millions of dollars for marketing who just want to make even more money. You are a nice person who just wants to quit their nine to five and you have a story to tell. So explain why you came up with this product ID, explain what it engaged for you, how much time you invested in it. And the comment section supports Markdown. So you can add links, for instance, to your products. So if people are browsing the comments, you can directly link them to your product, as well as link your social media. If you have a YouTube channel or if you're writing your journey on Twitter, make sure you add a link to that part so they can start growing a little following that's gonna be very helpful for the next part. All right, now the second way to get upvotes is through outbound upvotes. It's basically anyone who is not currently on the product and platform, but decides to come and help you. For instance, when I got started, I would send my product link to all my family and friends 
and ask them for upvotes. But there are many other more reliable ways. The first one is Twitter. Twitter and Product Hunt have a good audience overlap. There are tons of solopreneurs on Twitter who have a Product Hunt account and they will be happy to help you. And then it boils down to making good tweets. So learn the basic of writing how to make a tweet that's easy to read, learn how to make a good headline that catch people's attention, learn how to tell your story in a nice way that people can relate, learn how to make good creative that will get people's attention. For me, it all started with fun launch videos. Back then, I had a few hundred followers on Twitter and I would make those videos where I would go on a fake podcast with uh, Joe Rogan or I would go in a movie with Leonardo DiCaprio. And this felt like me, it was fun to make and some people on Twitter enjoyed it. So they started to uh, watch the video, upvote my product Hunt listing and also reshare the link. That really helped me boost the product hunt launch and that's also how I grew an audience. I actually made a little course about how I make those videos. If you want to check it, it's in the description. It might sound a little bit discouraging if you're getting started and you don't have an audience yet. But remember, an audience is not created out of thin air. People follow you for a reason. And that reason is because you might be the guy who launched a bunch of products on Product Hunt. So you gotta start somewhere. Build the audience or build the products. Start with the products. Launch things on Product Hunt and this is how you're going to get people follow you on Twitter that later will help you achieve more momentum for every new Product Hunt launches. And of course, if you're active on any other social media, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, wherever this is you are, make sure to share the links to your Product Hunt listing there to get some votes. Another way to drive outbound upvotes is through your actual users. Let's say you have launched a product already and you have 100 active daily users or something like that. You can tell them through mailing lists or anything that you can reach out to them to help you support the Product Hunt launch. If they're your users, they probably already love you and it's going to drive some more upvotes to your Product Hunt listing. And finally, you want to add a badge to your website, a little banner, top left, bottom right, wherever this is you think fits well, that says, oh, we are live on Product Hunt for the next 24 hours, we would love your support. That is very helpful for two reasons. First, the Product Hunt users who clicked your websites and are now visiting your landing page. It's a good way to bring them back to the platform to give you an extra upvote. And second, you can launch your startups on many other platforms at the same time. You can launch on Hacker News, Reddit, Twitter at the same time, and you can get extra traffic from those platforms. When they see the badge on Product Hunt, some of them will come and give you a little hint and upvote your Product Hunt listing. This is what I do all the time. I schedule the Product Hunt launch and I would launch on every other platform so it brings an extra juice to Product Hunt. And if you want to know how to launch on those other platforms, I wrote a little something on my blog in the description. Okay, now you might be convinced it's a good time for you to launch your startups, but which day should you actually launch? It depends on what you want. If you want social proof or traffic. If you want traffic, Mondays to Fridays are usually the busiest. Busiest in terms of traffic, people actually browsing the site, but also busier in terms of competition. So it's harder to get an award, but it's easier to get traffic. And since VC startups don't work on Monday at midnight, I recommend you to start launching on Monday. Instead, if you're looking for social proof and you want to get that product hunt badge to embed on your site, I recommend you to launch on the weekends. And especially Sundays are usually the calmest days, so you have less competition and more chance to get the badge. Is your product ready to be launched on product hunt? Well, based on the t-shirt, <laughs> pretty sure that you can guess I'll tell you it's time to launch it. But I would argue that you should wait until you have at least some testimonials on your site before launching. The reason is simple. There will be tons of new people discovering your products. So you want to make sure you have some kind of social proof because it's much easier to sell a product if people are already validating it. And keep in mind that you can still relaunch your product a few months later. And you can also launch some free tools to promote your main product. So don't hesitate to launch as soon as you have social proof. The first product hunt launch is hard and might not go as you expect. It. But it's a necessary step. If you're serious about becoming a solopreneur, quitting your 9 to 5 and become financially independent, it's a tiny step that's going to help you in the future. You're going to start growing a little audience on Twitter because people will admire you for launching your product. So the next time you launch a product, you can ask your audience to help you out, which is going to grow a bigger audience. And it's going to be a, like a little loop that's going to keep going up and up and up. And you'll see that after a couple of launches, you're almost guaranteed to have one of the product hunt badge. And you will as well get a couple hundred, if not thousand visitors on your site and grown a little audience. So my advice is to not overthink it. Just launch it and keep repeating the same recipe over and over until luck finds you. All right, that's it for this video. If you liked it, you can like the video. And if you're looking for other ways to market your startup, I drop a link to my blog below where there are many other uh, free ways to market uh, your startup and get customers. And until the next video, I hope you just launch it.